part of powder to about one and a half parts of water. Spray some cerium oxide on top of my tool. And unlike grinding, you don't need to really put a whole lot of cerium oxide on. You don't need to keep recharging and start polishing. Now, something to remember, OK, there's a couple of critical points, one of which is when you put the mirror on the fish lap. Got to be careful. Go back and forth. Different uh, people have different methods of doing this. There's a lot of people that say use uh, real soft pitch and real heavy strokes and be really bear down on the uh, pitch lap. I learned from a guy named Bob Goff, who's now deceased. He was an expert uh, mirror maker and made mirrors for uh, Celestron. Died in December 2001. <coughs> And Bob taught me to be real gentle with the pressure. No more pressure than the glass itself. Just go back and forth and polish. You've got my back now. Uh, and you won't get a turned down edge. You know, a turned down edge for some people is no big deal. For me, I prefer not to have a turned down edge for a variety of reasons. Yes, I know that I could grind it off and then not have a turned down edge, but then I have, I'd, I'd reduce the uh, aperture of the mirror. And I don't want to do that. You know, and I feel that as, this is my hobby. I've got the time to do this the right way. I'm going to take the time to do it the right way. And I'm going to maximize the aperture of my mirror. So that's just my belief. That's the way I do things. Other people have their own ways of doing things. I'm not going to say they're right. I'm not going to say they're wrong. But this is my way. And now my mirror is gliding slowly, gently across the pitch lap. And I'll keep it up for about a half hour with the mirror on top, probably in 15 minute intervals. Then I'll switch to the tool on top, go for about a half hour to hope to keep the figure spherical, just by alternating mirror on top and tool on top. And after the end of an hour or two, I'm going to have a uh, what I call a flash, what's called a flash polish. It's going to be a very, uh, it's going to look good until you look at it under a, uh, under a light source with a magnifying glass and you see that actually the edges of the mirror are going to be a long ways from being polished out. But it'll get out a lot of the real small pits and you'll think the mirror is fully polished out. It's not. And if you were to send out to be uh, aluminized at that point, one, you'd be very disappointed with your results, very disappointed, uh, because the uh, mirror would come back aluminized, but it would be just barely uh, recognizable. The, the edges would be really very gray and non-reflective. And you really wouldn't have a very good mirror. This actual polishing, which I started at 7.50 this evening, uh, it needs to go on for about uh, tw you know, 10 to 12 hours minimum, just to polish, just to polish out to get a good sphere. The way you check to make sure that you're properly polished is you shine a real bright light, a real intense light at the mirror and see if the intense light can be seen on the top of the mirror, on the surface. If it goes through the surface, that area is polished out. If it doesn't, and you see light on the surface of the mirror, then you're not polished. Uh, you know, and again, you know, this is your mirror. This is something you're going to have for a long time. So it's probably worth the patience and the little extra time it takes to get the mirror polished out properly. Now, I also look at the temperature that I'm at. I'm using Google's 73 pitch. And uh, the rule of thumb is that the number of the Google's pitch should approximate the temperature at which you're going to be polishing to get the proper hardness of the pitch. Right now, coincidentally, it's in the low 70 degree range down here in my basement. 
that's going to change dramatically over the next couple of months. So I want to get this polished out you know, fairly quickly, so I should really devote a lot of time right now, because this basement does get into the high 30s, and there just is no pitch that is soft enough to be the appropriate, uh, the appropriate uh, consistency to polish at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, really the numbers of googles are more associated with the melting point or the softening point of the pitch, and they're not even directly related to that. And that's in uh, degrees uh, Celsius, not degrees Fahrenheit. But as a rule of thumb, take the number of the pitch, 51, 64, 73, 80-something, and 91. I think it's 84 and 91. And depending upon the temperature you're going to be working at, that should be the number of the pitch that uh, you're using. Also, I try to keep it to it. I generally don't, but I try to keep the strokes to three strokes. One, two, three. Center over center, about a one-third overhang. And just work at it. Just work back and forth, back and forth. Is it tedious? Is it boring? Can a machine do it better? I don't know if a machine can do it better, but it certainly is tedious and it certainly can be boring. Just keep it going. And with that, I'm going to commit a cardinal sin and leave the mirror on top of the lap for a minute. Turn off the tape and say good night and thanks for watching. And then I'm going to continue.